You are listening to Fanther Tracks. It's time to spin round the rim. This is Desert Planet Discs. Star Wars music in a single file. Here are your hosts, Carl Bayliss and Greg Robertson. Watch out. You better not cry. You better not call on your Jedi. The Empire is coming to town. We have a Death Star. We've tested it twice. Tracking down rebels and ending their lives. The Empire is coming to town. I have a very bad feeling about this. <laughs> Kind of gross. <laughs> you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not fall for your death. The Empire is coming to stop. Ho, ho, ho. Welcome, one and all, to this festive edition of Desert Planet Discs. Opening the show there, we had the Star Wars main theme Christmas version from Epic Music Movie on YouTube, and followed that up with the Stormtrooper song, which was a Spike TV Star Wars marathon advert, and that was also from YouTube. So, uh, a nice bit of Christmassy sounds to open the show there. And of course, where would we be on Desert Planet Discs without my co-host and very good friend, Mr. Greg Robertson, a.k.a. Darth Elvis. Ho, 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 hot day! How's it going? I'm all good, sir. How are you? Good, good, yeah. Um, giving up for the uh, the festive season? Yeah, all, all, all prepped. That's me on holiday now as we're recording. Uh, nice long break until January, so... Nice, yeah. nice. Yes, I've so, been going the other way. I've been working all weekend, so... <laughs> Not the best, but uh, there we go. Not great, and we are we're, we are honoured. We are honoured to be joined by a very very special guest. I'm going to do a little play of a button here to get, introduce this next gentleman. You've heard his name. 
Now hear his voice. Martin Keeler, Martin Keeler, Martin Keeler, Martin Keeler, Martin Keeler. It's Martin Keeler, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, the man behind hashtag Cantina. Oh, and many, many other things, including the Zuvium. <laughs> And he also looks after my, some of my children for me in uh, <laughs> his neck of the woods. <laughs> and they all say hello, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Welsh recording. Happy birthday to William. Indeed, yes. <laughs> he says he misses his real dad. <laughs> hey, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> How are you Welcome. doing, sir? Welcome to the show. Very well indeed, yes. Thanks, thanks for having me. Um, I believe I'm sponsoring this show, aren't I? Yes. <laughs> yes. No, the number of mentions. Yeah. But, uh, Drinking but... game, isn't there? With the the Martin yeah. Keeler mentioned in the uh, yeah, down a shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please drink responsibly. And yeah, this edition could be <laughs> fairly heavy going for you if that is a drinking game that you play. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we figured that after twelve months of. Martin getting mentions in virtually every show. It was about time we got the man himself on as a special Christmas treat for us and you, the listeners. <laughs> I love the fact that you think the listeners have any idea. <laughs> <laughs> They're just a, just a guy who lives down in Berkshire. <laughs> uh, uh, but the legend, you see, we've built the legend for you. This is true. Indeed. I was going to say... I, I don't think you could ever be criticised for not bigging me up. <laughs> and, and the way the way you managed to get every one of your guests in some way, shape or form to say, and yeah. then Martin Keeler did this. Yeah. Making it look like I've actually done something in my life. It's like my parents are so proud. I just <laughs> I just get them to listen to this and they, they think I've done something. <laughs> and for that, I will always be grateful. Unfortunately, listeners, you're just listening and you can't actually see the, the vision behind Martin at the moment. But when he said, bigging me up, I was thinking, <laughs> there's a picture of Christopher Biggins behind Martin at the moment. Yes. <laughs> of course. Slightly Dude. disappointed that you guys haven't got a similar picture, to be honest with you. You kind of got a bit, a bit dull with your Star Wars backgrounds. Yeah. You, haven't got a, you haven't got a naked Biggins, like yeah. everyone has on Zoom. <laughs> I might have to dig out a naked Burt Reynolds or Hasselhoff to get uh, oh, there the, you go. the yes. festive juices flowing. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Our pleasure. And uh, as I say, for, for people that aren't aware, as Greg says, Martin was part of the brains behind the Hashtag Cantina event at Celebration mm -hmm. Europe 2016. All those yeah. years ago. It, it was Jed and myself. And what on earth happened to Jed? Yeah, <laughs> he's just disappeared, isn't he? he just disappeared yeah. off the base of the earth, producing <laughs> films or something. Yeah, yeah. He keeps banging on about some film he's watched or something, but yeah, <laughs> no, bless him. Jed would be uh, he's someone to get on here, he'll oh, come absolutely. on here. Yes, with the 2021 roster of guests, yeah, I'll definitely have to get Jed on. I say book him now because it's going to be difficult to get him. I think <laughs> give it six, give it six months, and you have to go through his agent. Oh, absolutely. I think, yeah. That's you, isn't it? Well, I don't like to say. <laughs> <laughs> My nickname is 10%. <laughs> I think I'm still owe you a lot of 10%, unfortunately. <laughs> so, Carl, we met at Cantina, didn't we? Very briefly, if we I remember. We did. We did. I think that was the first time I actually met the legend that is Martin. Because <laughs> we'd, we'd spoken a bit online before, Anne, because you very kindly were offering to help out. Foolishly not realising I was having a nervous breakdown behind the scenes thinking, oh my goodness, what, what have I committed to doing? But yeah, I remember. I don't remember much about the night, but I do remember bumping into you. For people that have never met or seen Martin, he's usually fairly easy to pick out <laughs> on the basis that he has a, a penchant for Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> it was the taco so, shirt that it was the it, legendary it was the, it was the legendary taco shirt I believe yeah. Yeah. Uh, the big guns yes uh, yeah it was sort of wandering around the O2 looking very harassed <laughs> very <laughs> well, I stressed think, I think when we met um, what had just happened was the 501st had had their weapons confiscated by O2 security <laughs> as you do <laughs> and so therefore we had to go out and sort out and explain to them that they weren't real weapons they were yes. play, play weapons. 
Yeah, yeah. and they weren't real stormtroopers, and it wasn't the real Darth Vader. Absolutely, but it was it was one of the most bizarre phone calls we got, <laughs> which was the five oh first saying, uh, "Can you come and help us, please?" The security are confiscating our help me if you want Kenobi. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> on our list of things that could go wrong, it's fair to say that wasn't one of them. Yeah. <laughs> But bang up to date now, our most recent chats have centred around the Disney Investor Call this week, where, yes, folks, we hosted a group watch party to listen to our illustrious cousins across the pond talking all things Disney and uh, what's in the pipeline, price increases and things like that, <laughs> Disney Plus. It was all the, here's what you could have won if you actually invested in the company. Yes, <laughs> and, and, and look at our forecast for subscribers. We were hoping to be at about 100 million by 2024. We're currently at 86 million <laughs> after 12 months. They did well not to uh, publicly acknowledge that they feel the pandemic's done them a favour. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I thought they they were doing they were dancing around it quite nicely, sort of trying to get that balance, weren't they? Of yeah. It's all going incredibly, incredibly well. We well, won't talk about the theme parks. We won't talk about the theme parks, no. Yeah. But <laughs> Disney, yeah, Disney they're, Plus. They're, they're, they're not bringing a lot of money in, but yeah. Disney Plus, what a year to have launched a <laughs> subscription service. Clearly that there's happens. a market for it, I think, was the message, wasn't it? Not. Yeah. <laughs> there was never any discussion about it being a bit of a weird week year. Yes. Yeah, so um, once we got through all the uh, the lovely chats about subscriber numbers... Oh, so sorry, Carl, I'm going to pull you up there. What do you mean, once we got through? <laughs> As you know, that was my favourite bit sorry. by a long stretch. Yes. That call's still going on, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I love about it, because they had that big... The beginning, they sort of teased you, didn't they, with the... Later on, we'll be showing some creative stuff. But hey, let's, let's talk about... The, the numbers the business. and then once you'd watched the creative stuff they went back to the numbers if you hung on oh, oh. you see we've become so conditioned this year to watching people presenting graphs and things like that that i think i said in the group chat it was it was nice to see uh, some graphs that <laughs> weren't all about the mortality <laughs> effect of the pandemic it's true yeah <laughs> <laughs> look there's a graph going up and it's subscriber numbers not hospitalization <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so hopefully I've corrected there, Carl. It wasn't getting through it at all. It was a short evening. section at the beginning that everyone really wanted was finished. The they had to fill with something, that, didn't that, they? They they started on all the filler of <laughs> creative nonsense. My favourite they... bits were the countdowns where you couldn't see anything. Or just, you know, <laughs> oh. Here's what you could see if you did invest in the company. As, and did you see that straight afterwards, investment went like through the roof? Yeah. <laughs> and of course, everyone was saying, is this because they've done such a comprehensive job of convincing people no what they literally did was an advert that said if you give us money we'll show you two minutes of something that you just haven't seen yes yeah <laughs> well, okay there you Perhaps go you'll be all watching your feed martin yeah. <laughs> yeah. we'll have a whip round martin can be, martin can be found at <laughs> youtube um, as ever with these things they didn't go straight out of the gate into the uh, the big franchises but teased a few of the general disney shows and other content and adding a fifth arm to is it is it fifth i'm, I'm trying to remember the disney plus home screen now yes but, yeah, Marvel, uh, pixar disney and star wars national the, geographic is on there yeah. as well. different for each region though isn't it yeah so. and then we're getting an extra button on that front page for all the grown-up content. Yes. Wacka uh, Jacka, after Wacka dark. Jacka. Wow, wow, yes. wow, wow, wow. The Red Shoe Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, Twilix few... Station. <laughs> Taste <laughs> a few things that are going to be on, on that. A couple of drama series and... Actually, I was excited about that. They had the Martin Short and Steve Martin. Was it Mur- Murders in the House or something it was called? I'm going to get that yeah, wrong. You need to like fact-check it. Yeah. yeah, with some nice smooth jazz over the two minutes we didn't get to see uh, yeah. anything. Yeah. But that was the one where we didn't know they were doing that, so we thought they'd either cocked up yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or they literally were advertising it by just playing some smooth jazz some over smooth a logo. Smooth jazz over, over a title card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But if, I think that's if, quite good. I'm looking forward to that. I think Steve Martin and Martin Short can't go wrong with them. Yeah. 
And then FX, of course, announced an Aliens series, or an Alien series. Yeah, cool. Aliens on Earth, isn't it? I was a reality TV thing. <laughs> yeah. There it is, Aliens like, on Earth. Celebrity <laughs> jungle. <laughs> Only this time, it's not creepy crawlies. Yeah. <laughs> and then eventually we've gone to some Star Wars shows that are coming. Star yes. Wars shows and Star Wars movies. Just a few. Uh, they weren't holding back. I think this was official confirmation of a couple of things that have been rumoured and sort of firming up a bit more. We did get to see a, a bit of a sort of sizzle reel for the Cassian Andor show, which is called Andor. And that was a reveal, the title, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, because I don't think they had given any title for it previously. And of course, the uh, the announcement that they made, I think, was it one of the Disney events, or it might have even been, was it Disney event? Or, it was D23, wasn't it, for the Obi-Wan Kenobi show? Oh, it was, yes, D23, where Ewan came out and said, yeah. ask me one more time, Kathleen Kennedy, am I <laughs> well, going to play <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi? Yeah, on. he didn't say hello there. No, That's but... shocking. Yeah. I was in the room for that, so here's, here you go. Let's, there's a name drop, Bong, I was in the room. Yeah. But every single person in that room knew that was going to happen. And yet it did not dull the moment at all. <laughs> Although I seem to recall talking about it at the time and saying for a company that has, this is Disney and Lucasfilm, some of the top screenwriting talent at their fingertips, that was so wooden and badly scripted. It didn't matter. It, I, I can no. tell you. No. So if you put it where it is, I think the day before he was seen walking around Disneyland with his family. Right, <laughs> the, room, the room was where they were going to announce Kenobi, and then they did the whole thing. I think actually the bit that was a bit of a surprise. It looked like they weren't going to do it, yeah. which was the weird thing. And then she just said, "Let me bring someone out," and they did that, like you say, that scripted-ish bit of banter. Yeah, but it really didn't matter because everyone was going absolutely bonkers because this is what everyone wanted to hear. We also got a bit of news about that show that was new news that Hayden Christensen will be reprising the role of Darth Vader. Yeah, and I think the, the sizzle reel that we couldn't see yes, apparently was lots of talking heads, wasn't it? With Ewan sort of saying how excited he is, etc. And I think it's where Kathleen Kennedy has said there's going to be a rematch of the fight. That's, yeah, that's the story that's been uh, coming out over the last few days. So, yeah, so uh, we await that one. I think, that, I think they said that begins shooting next year. Yeah, I think March, yeah, April. She said March, yeah. Yeah, so, and uh, Andor's just starting. Two weeks ago. Yeah, the sizzle reel that we got to see was uh, them in rehearsals and bits of concept art and things like that, although it's Rogue One, isn't it? <laughs> it's that well, sort of you, era. But do you know what struck me about it was there was nothing about K2SO. Yeah, indeed. indeed. And when they announced it at D23, they had uh, Turek and... Diego Luna on stage, and it was sort of almost billed as a the double buddy, act back. Buddy cop, <laughs> buddy cop. I kind of wondered if that was going to be the title. You know, you have Andor and K two S O or something because yeah, of how yeah. they were p- pitching it back then, but clearly not. Unless it becomes clearly, clearly, there's a finite end. Yes. <laughs> um, or, or is the you know Palpatine came back? But it depends how far, how early they're starting. Obviously, with the de aging technology that's available now they could young cassian could be part of the story where he actually appropriates k2so and reprograms him that that is actually one of the the storylines along the way are you thinking they're going to show his fight from when he was six years old (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think the de-aging technology would have to go some way to (laughs) de-age him just a bit they might get a young actor to play him you know i mean again We've seen similar sort of things to that in The Mandalorian, the young Din in flashback sequences and things like that. So you can't rule anything out or rule anything in, really, at the moment. So, And being rather boring, I, I do wonder whether the changes to all the scheduling has perhaps made it a bit more difficult to get hold of Tudyk. Because yeah. he's, he's got a lot on at the moment. He was already in a backlog of stuff. So he's got a series coming out called Illegal Alien, which looks really good if you get a chance to watch that. Saw, saw the pilot in... New York Comic Con it was really really good and he said one of the things that was funny about doing Andor as it's now called because they just announced it that it was in pre-production so the, the the question he answered about Star Wars was they said you know how excited were you and he said well the, the funny thing was 
it came up and I got the call to say we're going to do it. But it was really late in the day. And he said, and it was the, the, the planets haha, aligned because it was like the one break I had in my schedule was when they needed me for filming for Andor, as it turns out. Yeah. But of course, all of that will have gone out the window now. Although, with the greatest of respect <laughs> to, to, to what he brings to that role, if the worst case scenario is that perhaps they have had to rewrite some of the series and leave him out or introduce him, and he's just perhaps fulfilling a, a voiceover role initially and somebody else is in the uh, yeah, the rather fetching grey bodysuit. Somebody else might be doing the mocap for it. Yeah. You know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just wildly guessing though because you'd think yeah. doing, doing something like that would be pretty top of the list Absolutely. You'd, you'd think if there were any penalties that uh, the other yeah. series could probably get financed by the penalties <laughs> that yeah. Lucas yeah. would be paying for it. but it, it just occurred to me that he did say it was you know he had a nervous moment where he got the call and thought I just have no gap in my schedule to do it and it just happened to be the gap so Although again, with with the the way things have gone this year, maybe his whole schedule's been. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, a lot more yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps so... he's got a spin off. Yeah, doing his own. <laughs> yeah, he can do his, his voiceovers from anywhere as well. So yeah, yeah. But he does a lot of voiceover work, so as you say, his yeah. schedule might be backlogged. Yeah. So yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other series that have been talked about in the Investicle in a short while. But of course. In this year of Zoom chats and group calls, the Investor one wasn't the first one that we convened. A few short weeks ago, we celebrated Life Day. And what better way to celebrate Life Day than watching the infamous holiday special with those nearest and dearest to us? Itchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lumpy. Lumpy. Mala. Oh, Akamina. Akamina. So, we convened, again, Martin's organisation. He see, tells you that he doesn't do anything, but he had the idea and convened a ramshackle group of <laughs> participants. <laughs> it was a thoroughly, thoroughly fun night. I think um, my favourite viewing of the holiday special ever, for sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Being able and, to watch it with friends, albeit virtually, is, it was fantastic. Yeah, and, and kind of summed up this year. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Any entertainment's good entertainment. <laughs> 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 it was incredible to watch. I don't feel naughty watching it because we found a YouTube link, so none of us stuck our neck out to watch it. It was all a good. Nice, a nice YouTube copy. It yes. was a nice. It was. It was a nice version, nice wasn't it? <laughs> it, was, it was very, very, very clean. Not very VHS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, it had the adverts on, didn't it? Before yeah. it had, yes, no, it was it was good. Wonder right. Woman and the Incredible Hulk will not be joining us this evening. Yeah, someone should use that at start of a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Great song. It's funny we didn't thought that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other upshot of that night is uh, I think Greg, Andy and I are uh, looking to <laughs> redo the Starship song that features in, in the middle of the holiday special. For next year. Oh, Randomly. Yeah. I, Did we, a... I think we actually might have accidentally agreed to, to do all the songs from the holiday <laughs> special. <laughs> the holiday special. I think we're halfway there, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. We, we did this year the Leia song. A day to celebrate. I think a day to celebrate, so that's the one. In fact, Wait, in fact, have, you, have you played that on this? Not yet, no, no. Ooh! So this has got to go, surely this has got to go in. Oh, there you go, you see. In fact, I'm going to say right now, here and now, you cannot use any of my content. Unless... <laughs> unless play that, that is played. <laughs> <laughs> well funny you should say that <laughs> it's coming up no, we're editing you out <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, come, coming up yeah. yes the next tunes we have are a double header we have a version of the Christmas in the Stars track what can you get a Wookiee for Christmas when he already owns the comb and that's an a cappella version by Voice Play. And then, as we've just teased, the wonderful Darth Elvis and Friends with a day to celebrate. Said I've got to know oh, Won't somebody help me? Please help me Cause I got this problem That I've got to solve Won't somebody let me what can you get 
A Wookiee for Christmas when he already owns a cone. Ooh, what can you get in a hurry for a furry kind Ooh, of friend like that to take home? He'll never wear galoshes or a hat up on his furry dome. So. A Wookiee for Christmas When he already owns a cone What can you get? A Wookiee for Christmas When he already owns a cone What can you get? In a hurry for a furry kind of friend like that To take home He doesn't need a tight lip And he doesn't use shaving foam So a Wookiee for Christmas for when he already owns a home Let's give him love and understanding Goodwill's a man Wrap it all up in Bright colored ribbon and we'll give it to him All over again That's what you get A Wookiee for Christmas for when he already owns a home When he already owns a home
look at the size of that thing. There you go, folks. A double header there with Wookie for Christmas by Voice Play, followed up by Darth Elvis and his friends performing A Day to Celebrate from the Star Wars Holiday Special. The investor chat the other day, there was also talk of more Star Wars shows, but whilst we're talking about holiday special, another one that piqued my interest was the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which is coming. <laughs> but we're here to talk Star Wars, so... What? Uh, but, but no, Greg, I can't let you mention Guardians of the Galaxy without reminding you your magnificent reaction to riding on Guardians of the Galaxy Breakout oh. when we was at Disneyland. For anyone, see, anyone who knows Greg would know that he loves a roller coaster, loves a thrill ride. <laughs> and what I learned on that trip was when he's very scared, he shouts hot dang at the top of his voice. <laughs> like, like muscle memory, isn't it, Greg? <laughs> Oh my word, tell you, I, having been on, I'd, I'd been on Tower of Terror in Florida three or four years previous to that, and I don't remember that being half as scary as that thing was. <laughs> I, I've got uh, I've got a vertigo, fear of falling, and yeah, that thing just freaked me out. You, you said I looked like a force ghost on this camera tonight, but <laughs> I thought I was going to chuck my guts up in the gift shop as I was walking out. <laughs> I could just remember the lift going up and down and all you could hear about just over the soundtrack was hot dang, hot dang, hot dang. <laughs> <laughs> and when, the, when the big drop, it was just like hot dang. <laughs> <laughs> Do what you're bringing back terrible memories. Of the <laughs> you can move. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I hope that's on the holiday special. I hope that was captured. Yeah. And that would be, be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. But uh, on the Star Wars front, we had some more news. We had Acolyte was one of the other shows announced, which was a out of left field one. I don't think we'd heard much about that apart from the the director or the writer had been announced for. Uh... Yeah, it's. I think they said they were tying it into the uh, High Republic. Yeah, it's um, set at the tail it, end of the High Republic era, apparently. Yeah. And it's... Sith. Yes, it's obviously yes. a Sith acolyte. Lots lots of people hoping that that's going to be... Uh, Darth Talon? Possibly Darth Talon. Or, you know, one of those other sort of characters from uh, the old EU being brought back into uh, modern canon. Well, I have to say, it would definitely test the de-aging technology if they brought McDermott back, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> be out. There's a good chance he could pop up in a few of these shows, though. You know, Obi Wan Kenobi yeah. one, possibly. Hey, he, could, he could pop up in all of them now. In all of them, yeah. Now, yeah, now we've discovered that <laughs> he's, a, he, he's an emperor for all seasons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for every season. Turn, turn, turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good old, uh, good old Ian McDermott. Yeah. A local boy. Um, <laughs> another yeah. one I was very excited about, and that was the announcement of Lando. Oh, yeah, limited series. Which yeah, so, like, it's with Obi Wan Kenobi is just a, like a one-off series, I guess. Yeah, I think with all of these, although they're calling them a limited series at the moment, that's probably down to either not being able to tie down the actors to an ongoing series at this stage, or the. Uh, at the point that a lot of these were being first banded around, the Obi-Wan Kenobi thing has been going around that it would have been a film, and then they've, off the back of the lack of commercial success for Solo, they quickly battened down the hatches and rethought and tried to flip some of the things into TV series. So I think some of the Obi-Wan uh, show is a perfect example. Although they're saying it's a limited series, I think if it takes off to the degree that something like Mandalorian has, then you could see further limited series. So I, I just think by limited series, all they're really saying is it's not going to be a season every year like something like Mandalorian will be. Yeah. And wouldn't it be the most beautiful irony if Lando proved to be the most successful thing on Disney Plus? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Which yeah. it has, in my view, yeah. has every chance of being. Yeah. I thought it was, it's surprising that. They obviously announced the show, but they didn't announce which Lando we're getting. Are we getting an old Lando or a young yeah. Lando or both? Could it be like 
Billy D introducing like oh, Tales Around the Fire type of thing or like, yeah. my adventures in uh... it's, it's, it's got to be the Calrissian Chronicles though surely yeah it's yeah, like well... that, that was in the film almost as a you know yeah. here's something we could do in it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's Donald Glover recording his memoirs and as he goes along. So it is almost drip fed. The you know it's it's got the potential to be there. And like um, you say, it's it's not impossible that you have Billy D looking. Yeah. Oh, I can you imagine you've got Billy D talking with Jana about the adventures he's had. Yeah, and he brings out the Calrissian Chronicles. Oh, it's just it's just the dream project for me. Yeah. And I hope the music they used is official music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sexy wah wah pedal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it was, it was. <laughs> and it, and nothing's come out about what they showed, footage wise. There, you know, even though at uh, best it must have been a logo. But well, we got to see the logo, didn't we? So yeah, yeah. Um, got... I've not seen any reports of this is what you got to see if you had invested mm. yeah. your millions into Disney. Yeah. It's kind of going down the route of a lot of the, the Marvel comics where bringing characters in for, you know, some of the mainline titles and then it's like, oh, we've got a four-part Darth Maul comic or we've got a six-part Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker story. Uh, you know, they're all sort of tying into the, the main line. Maybe that's a way that they're, they're looking, as we also found out, spin-offs from Mando. Perhaps Solo has been the springboard and you could get a... Akira series. Paul Bettany's obviously going to be appearing in One Division, oh, which I cannot wait for. Oh, I have yeah. to say, that does look stunning, doesn't it? Does look yeah. very, very good. But you know, less than, less than a month. Less than a month. Less than a month. <laughs> wow. So yeah, you've got. You know, he's obviously not averse to appearing in some sort of episodic TV show. So maybe you get Akira and Dryden Voss series, or you know, they're working with that. Sorry, Carl, are you saying they didn't announce enough series for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just thinking, you know. Oh. We didn't get our Max Rebo show we were hoping for. No, no, no Max Rebo Spinal Tap and no Star Wars Muppet Babies. No. Yeah. Still time. There's still time. We're still pitching. Yeah, uh, Martin's still pitching for the Zuvio uh, TV show. Yeah. I, I, as I said, I want it to be announced and then cut. Yeah. That's my dream. <laughs> That's my dream. That's how they should handle that one. <laughs> hey, this is Mark Hamilton from Ash, and you're listening to Desert Planet Discs. See, that's the other thing. If you've got a Lando series, you bring Phoebe Waller Bridge back in as well. Yeah, because there's no reason why it couldn't be before Solo. Yeah. Yeah. Donald's uh, still a young looking man. There we go. So everyone was saying how excited Hasbro must be about all these announcements and the figures. But I think the Lando one. The, pers- the people who would be most excited would have been her universe and Hot Topic. Mm. It's all going to get different shirts and different capes yeah. week in, week out. It's going to be like a fashion show. Yeah. Speaking of Hasbro, and this brings us nicely on to talking about Mando Season 2 and the, the, the spin-offs mentioned on that uh, investor chat. The Hasbro guys must be incredibly happy at the moment that they've got another at least... Three different versions of Boba Fett they can release. <laughs> Bald Boba, Boba partially dressed, and Boba with a new paint job. <laughs> and Boba's oh. got a brand new paint job. Digga, 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 digga. <laughs> and you've got not Boba as well, haven't you? Not not Boba in episode one as well. Yes. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cobb Van. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, they they must be sitting there going. Well, you, you almost wonder, did they phone up and say, is there any chance you could get him to paint his armour? <laughs> just, it, just it just makes it a bit easier for us. Yeah, yeah. And, and, Keeps and the while, costs down. Yeah. <laughs> and while, while you're on, uh, I know we've got these dark troopers to make, but can you just throw in a couple of designs that we've yeah, seen right. before? Oh, I'll tell you what, let's let's stick in some shore troopers. Uh, how about the tank driver, but we'll make him grey? Ah, oh, brilliant. We've got the moulds for those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been a good series, though, hasn't it? Season two. It's like, we're, what is it? We're a, a less than a week away now from the season finale. It's exciting times, isn't it? I mean, where do you think it's going to go with this, this season finale? I mean, how long an episode is it going to be for starters? Mm. What can they do in 30 minutes, 40 minutes? I was thinking about this when I was writing the review for the last episode, The Believer. And I just kind of think, 
there's part of me thinks that like he won't rescue Grogu. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, that's exactly the same as happened in season one. He found yeah. Grogu, he lost him again, and then he gets him back again at the end. So I wonder whether they would leave a cliffhanger like that over a series. I mean, we know we're getting season three. It wasn't announced the other day. I mean, I know John Favreau has obviously been saying he's writing three and four back to back, but it wasn't actually announced the other day no. that they were doing season three, which I thought was quite strange. Although I think that they have announced it already, haven't they? Because it's, yeah. like, it's in pre-production, isn't it? Or I think it's in pre-production, yeah. possibly, yeah. So we're all good. But I think they will do a big cliffhanger there. I think it's not impossible that it becomes the Boba Fett show. And I think Mando sacrifices himself to save Grogu. And there's an honour thing, because they're clearly trying to make Fett a man of honour now, or a bounty hunter of honour. Yeah. yeah. He's still indebted, so he will continue the mission. But at the risk of alienating myself I think Boba Fett in Mandalorian is making a good side character mm. and I'm really pleased that they've shown him everything everyone dreamed he would be, being able to handle himself out. I don't think he's a main character though he's he's very straight and very you know, and, and the thing with, they did with the Mandalorian they almost started, didn't they, the Mandalorian like that and then Grogu's turned him into a different character where he's questioning yeah. his own beliefs and he's compromising his own beliefs. You can't do that to Boba Fett, can you? No. Uh, given the journey they went on with Luke in the in the sequel films, yeah. I think it would be very very brave to take a a fan favorite character like Fett. As you say, people now have got on screen kick ass Boba Fett exactly as you hoped he was. The mythos that surrounded him being, you know, this hardened bounty hunter been living out on Tatooine. Has Boba been tracking the Mando all this time? Obviously, episode five of season one, Yeah, he pitched up at the end, with, obviously, with Fennec Shand. Or has he just spent all of his time since he got out of the Sarnak trying to find his armour? Because yeah. it means that much to him, and we've just seen the moment where he finally saw it. Mm. Yeah. Because that would explain why he's never left Tatooine. Yeah. All, the, all the things. There you go, that's your spin-off show. Yeah. <laughs> Well, him just wandering around looking him for Him just some wandering armor. around going, is my armour here? You see my armour? <laughs> As you wish. So speaking about these spin-off shows then, Rangers of the New Republic. Who's going to be in that, do you think? Cara Dune or the, the is it Red Squadron or Blue Squadron, whatever they're called? The... Yeah, I, th- I think it's basically it's Dave Filoni, Deborah Chow. <laughs> basically, we'll get we'll get all the people who've cameoed as X-wing pilots, just <laughs> an episode each. But do you not think this might be like next level pranking by Favreau? Because it was on galleries, wasn't it, that Dave Filoni was a reluctant X-wing pilot and yeah, kind of got tricked into it. I, I would love it, and I, I know this is too big a machine for this to happen. But imagine if Dave Filoni found out about this series at the investors' call. <laughs> and suddenly realise he's got a whole series written around him yeah. that he had no knowledge of <laughs> I'll tell, I, I tell you what it also highlights to me is how um, fandom is um, and I, I kind of mean this in a slightly affectionate way but how spoilt we are because I think if a week ago yeah because it wasn't even when we were recording this it wasn't even a week before they, they had done the announcements all you could read about was oh I hope they announced an Ahsoka show yeah. And I hope there's a Boba Fett one. But predominantly it was I hope this yeah, we're gonna get an Ahsoka show. And then when we were watching it, no one envisaged that we were gonna get so much. By the time it got to the announcement of the Ahsoka, everyone kinda of went, Yeah, that's the Ahsoka show, yeah, we knew about that one. Yeah. Which we didn't. <laughs> but it was kinda of like everyone yeah. like, Yeah, yeah, tick. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah, I, some of the stuff started to come out a couple of days before going, Oh, they're gonna announce ten new Star Wars shows or ten new Star Wars projects. And we've had discussions in the past about fandom and the way it's gone but it got that clear divide of people going oh well they're not going to do that that's that's just a wind up and people going oh they are oh brilliant this and it's going to be the ryan johnson trilogy that's going to be four of the ten and because <laughs> he can't count <laughs> yeah. or i can't count twist I want, pop, I want plot ryan twist trilogy. yeah but there's no reason why the ryan johnson trilogy isn't still going on it's like this is what makes me I'm laugh yeah. they don't they don't announce everything I think they're keeping their powder dry with that one. They're just trying to heal the wounds, get the stuff out there. And if they turn around in that investor call and go, and uh, Ryan Johnson's trilogy's on course to be released in 2022, people will be like, oh, no. But as it is, everybody's sort of calmed down a bit and gone, oh, we've got this show, we've got that show. 
uh, and actually I'm going to make a pledge here because this is something that's got me relatively cross I'm still seeing people oh they annoy me people who are like going oh Kathleen Kennedy's ruined Star Wars when it was Kathleen Kennedy who's bringing us all of this stuff yeah right Uh, and she didn't ruin Star Wars in the first place you know she we've never had it so good but literally I've seen her posting pictures of her in front of the 10 shows and the comments still say she's ruining Star Wars I'm kind of like do you even watch this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and, and that's the sad state of affairs. I mean, I know yeah. we've had the conversation many times, Martin, where we said at the time of the Disney acquisition, we were getting no Star Wars ever. Yeah. yeah. We got a couple of animated shows, but live action was pretty much dead in the water. Yeah. Maybe we'd have got 1313 had George have retained, but I think yeah. he pretty much binned it off. Although if you see the comments from the, uh, the recent, interviews that surfaced as part of the yeah, archives book isn't it archives yeah. book thing. Yeah. perhaps he may have come back to it at some point but as you say we've now an embarrassment of riches i think 43 years on and the biggest the biggest comment i've seen is people going oh, i think it's too much now what what an amazingly what may give me that worry every day of the week yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> out of these 10 shows that are coming up in the next three or four years or whatever four or five yeah. years my biggest worry is I might not enjoy one of them as much as the other. Yeah. Brilliant. I'll take that problem every day of the week. Every day of the week, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, at the at the end of the day, there are going to be shows in there and there are going to be projects further down the line that aren't going to land with every audience. Mm. That's the whole point. You look at the High Republic, Project Luminous, what they're saying with that is, you know, that is supposed to be multifaceted. There are elements of that that are aimed at young kids who have never seen a Star Wars film, have never seen a Star Wars TV show, that's to hook them in. That's not aimed at the 40-something diehard fans from back in the day. But by the same token, there will be elements of this High Republic that are pitched then at teens and things like that. You know, I mean, I've read some of the, as they class them, young adult novels, you know, which are clearly aimed at the teen market. And you kind of go, the story's great. The underlying story's great. Sometimes I do feel a bit like a seedy uncle when I'm reading it. You know, it's like that. That's, oh, oh no, oh, I don't really want to be reading about this. <laughs> but like you say, they're not aimed at you, are they? No, and I can take that on board and still enjoy you know, the underlying... Yeah. And, and, you know, I could understand people getting cross if that was all you had. If, if you had, yeah. you know, this year you're going to get a young adult novel and that's your lot. Yeah. Then, yeah, I can understand people saying, well, who wasn't it for me type thing, even though it's a bit entitled. But this is yeah. not where we're at. This is like, even, I, I think, you know, the illustrious Martin Newbold is a great example. I think it's the first time I've ever heard him go to a place that says, I won't be able to consume all of this. All of the stuff, the merchandise that comes with each of these series, with all the books that come out, with all the, you know, it's the first time I'm hearing someone who's so absorbed with all this stuff. As we know, it's like in his DNA. Yeah. And and, it, and like he's in, I know he's in the same not speaking for him but you know we hear him he says the same thing of you know this is the best problem of my life yeah yeah I, I've finally reached a point where I won't be able to keep up with it all brilliant and of course we know Mark he will be able to keep up with all yeah <laughs> yeah he won't, he won't sleep or eat but no but, <laughs> but what a, what an amazing problem to have forty three yeah. years down the line yeah there you go that's my serious bit for the night. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to Ahsoka, mm. Mm. the Good logo is quite interesting for that one. I thought the sort of background looks very world between worlds. Mm. Yeah, the whole thing that they brought into Rebels right at the end with, which I guess ultimately yeah. saved saved her life and brought her back, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was that's... quite interesting. So that's featured. So I think that's what it's meant to be featured in that logo, but yeah. this this feels like. The episode in Mandalorian, short of actual confirming it, it feels like that was the pilot, and that did take place before the end of Rebels. Yeah. Yes. I've all right. heard the Dave Filoni, I'm not going to give you an answer answer, which is as good a clue as you get is to say that door is wide open. Mm. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. it would make sense to me that, like you say, they, they go off on their journey to find Thrawn and Ezra, but you're right, it could be kind of cool if they actually use the world between worlds to and we see a completely different Star Wars yeah yeah. and of course two of the other projects that got confirmed were Bad Batch which we'd already heard about and another animation project called Visions which is apparently going to be standalone episodes but in a very manga 
anime style. I think that's one of the ones that excited me the most. I think mm. uh, that just looking at there was a bit of animation sort of style in the background there. It kind of made kind of got me woof. Because you, you see all these people have done their own sort of Japanese manga style, yeah. like Tie Fighter and stuff, and this is how stunning that looks. So yeah. hopefully they've given that guy a gig to do one of the episodes because that was outstanding. The idea of like an animated Jedi story but very samurai esque would be really really cool. And I think that's what looking at one of the pictures in the background of that logo it makes you makes me think that's something we're gonna get a, a very kind of samurai kind of vibe. There's one that I've seen as well in in that sort of animation style that was basically the opening sequence from Solo mm. oh yeah yeah you know that really really worked so make no bones about it I think it's something that Disney are doing to try and crack Star Wars in, into that market because generally in the Far East I don't think Star Wars does particularly well so obviously you mentioned the Clone Wars there, so probably uh, yep. uh, time to get a tune in again. Shall we get yes. some tunage on the go? This one is 12 Days of Christmas performed by the Clone Wars cast. This was originally done back in 2011 for the Force cast, and you'll find this one on YouTube. So give it a spin, people, please. All right, everyone, this is for the fans, so we're feeling... No on the first day of Christmas... The Clone Wars gave to me, Anakin, a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. You're stuck with me, Sky Guy. On the second day of Christmas, the Clone Wars gave to me, Ahsoka, two trusty droids. And a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. Goodness gracious me. On the third day of Christmas, the Clone Wars gave to me, Count, Dooku's henchmen. Two trusty droids. And a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. That's the spirit, Anakin. On the fourth day of Christmas, the Clone Wars gave to me, Obi-Wan and Plo. Dooku's henchmen. Two trusty droids. And a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. Now we're getting somewhere. On the fifth day of Christmas, the Clone Wars gave to me what? Five sentences. Of course. Obi-Wan and Plo. Dooku's henchmen. Two trusty droids. And the Padawan named Ahsoka to train. This is where the fun begins. Mm. Now on the sixth day of Christmas, the Clone Wars unfortunately gave to me... Jinobri the Slayer. Five sentences. And blow. Dooku's henchmen. Two trusty droids. And a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. Now on the seventh day of Christmas, the Clone Wars gave to me. Take it, mate. Black saber swing. Five and his team. Obi Wan and blow. Dooku's henchmen. Two trusty droids. And a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. It was a dark day on the eighth day of Christmas when the Clone Wars gave to me. Ghost Ball, the Mending Midget, Sky Saber Swing. Fives and his team. Obi Wan and Plo. Dooku's henchmen. Two trusty droids. And a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. But the ninth day of Christmas, well, the Clone Wars gave to me. Size noodles singing. Oh, 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 the Clone Wars gave to me. Have me secret mission. Slash noodle singing. Both ball of a bit of mad. Black Saber Swing. Fives and his team. Obi Wan and Plo. Dooku's henchmen. Two trusty droids. And a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. On the eleventh day of Christmas, the Clone Wars gave to me. Palpatine plotting. Have me secret mission. Slash noodle singing. Golf ball of a thing. Black saber swing. Fives and his team. Obi-Wan 
than Crow. Dooku's henchmen. Two trusty droids. And a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. All right, here it is, the big finish on the 12th day of Christmas. The Clone Wars gave to me Master Yoda. Force strong within you. Palpatine the protein. Excuse my secret mission. Sash Yoda singing. Close ball of the day. Black Sage swing. Boys and Two trusty droids and a Padawan named Ahsoka to train. Twelve Days of Christmas there by the Clone Wars cast and uh, one of the other shows that got a bit more exposure in the Disney Investors Call was The Bad Batch, which is Clone Force 99. Slightly defective clones, I think they were introduced as in the Clone Wars, particularly in Season 7, and uh, they've got their own spin-off show. We actually got to see a bit of a trailer for that, which looks to be continuing in that Clone Wars animation style, really taking it up a notch from Season 7, which a lot of people you know, have said it was probably one of the best uh, animated shows, very cinematic in the way it was presented, and this looks to be continuing that on. So is this, this this just a way of, uh, I'd say just a way, it's a beautiful, beautiful way, but this is, the Clone Wars is finished, so you can't really have yeah. the Clone Wars unless you delve back into the Clone Wars, which feels a bit wrong because it feels like it's done. Mm. Is this the Clone Wars, but under a different name because it's not the Clone Wars anymore? <laughs> this, which I am this, full in for. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think this is Disney's way of saying, yep, we cancelled the Clone Wars. Then we told you it's coming back for a final season. Oh, damn, it was a really big hit. Um, how can we kind of <laughs> keep this one? Although, in fairness, this must have been in production before. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. But I, I like the way the logo melted, didn't it, from the Clone yeah. Wars to the Bad Batch. You know, just in case you cool. hadn't got the hint, it's the same. Yeah, it's 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 a spin-off show. Yeah. yeah. You know. One of the another interesting thing from that trailer was what looks like Fennec Shand, yeah, yes. in the Mando, small old galaxy in it, small old galaxy, yeah, so it's a good old story group tying everything together. Yeah, what one of the things that does intrigue me about that is whether because one of, one of the criticisms I've seen from certain sections of fandom about the Ahsoka episode was, oh well, Ahsoka wasn't flying around like she does in uh, <laughs> Clone Wars, and you go. Yes, that's because it's animated and real people can't actually do that. be interesting to see whether Fennec Shan is moving in a different way than the character we've seen uh, thus far in The Mandalorian. Because for me, the story is still the same. So the character is the same and the story is still the same, regardless of whether it's told in live action or animation. It's the same as if you read a story and Ahsoka leapt over the front of an X-Wing or whatever. How you portray that in an animated medium as opposed to a live-action medium has got to be different. Yeah. yeah. Because because they are different presentation mediums. So, you know, for me, the fact that a character doesn't move... Admittedly, it's a character we've only ever seen in animation before, so... But, you, you know, you have to... Like we were saying before, you you know, you've got to accept these things for what they are mm. and you're never going to get a live action sequence. The, the only time we've ever really seen a live action sequence like that in Star Wars was the Yoda versus Dooku. Yeah. And everybody, yeah. at the time, everybody said, well, that looks ridiculous. <laughs> and admittedly, that wasn't really live, live action, but... But you get away with it. Like, I think that's a really good point because if you take the Yoda versus Dooku fight... You know, Yoda doesn't conform to the laws of physics. You know, he's a little green alien type thing for us. But like you say, when I, I always look at it like when you read a book and you visualize something in your head, that's one form of medium. Yeah. And you, okay, you do get people complain saying, oh, when I saw it on the screen, it wasn't what I thought it would be. But you kind of quite rightly excuse it because you know what you're visualizing is your version of what you're reading. And I do get that if you're watching something in animated, it it does deliver something, a vision for you. But yeah, you put it in a different format, it's going to look different. And Ahsoka looked different, behaved different. But it was definitely Ahsoka. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely the character Ahsoka. And I had no problem with it at all. No, absolutely. Got to see a love of Rosario Dawson anyway, but 
and so Tano even more. Yeah. Obviously, they had to make changes because if if they'd done one of her complaints was her her tendrils. They're not called tendrils. I can't oh, think of the word. Had creases in. <laughs> yeah. They weren't long enough. Was that one of the other oh, complaints yeah. as yeah. well? And it's like, well, you can't film somebody doing stunts in live action with those things about because they'd be slapping her in the face. Mm. Maul's metal legs in uh, Clone Wars don't actually look that metal. Is that is that an equal valid complaint? Or, <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, they they look like an animated Darth Maul. It looks fine, but it ain't gonna look like that on. Didn't look like it in Solo, did it? Yeah. No, it's all good for me. Yeah. What I want to see in a Bad Batch, and I think we said this in the watch party, and obviously we've got a slight vested interest because mutual friends, but I want to see the Republic Commandos get some screen time. Mm. They need to be introduced properly. Yeah, that'd be cool. Absolutely. Because they're awesome characters. And they've never really sort of not made them canon again. I know they are legends, aren't they? But they've never sort of killed killed off the thought that they're actually existing in the new canon. Yeah. yeah. So there you go, there's my pitch. Make it so, Disney. Yeah, 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 along with Max Rebo, Spinal Tap movie. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we've already seen, I think, the first two figures from the Bad Batch <laughs> uh, make their way into the Black Series line. And one would expect we're going to see the rest of the Bad Batch, plus other associated characters, especially if there are crossovers like Fennec Shan. Well, Hasbro have been pretty good, haven't they, about... I say that being pretty good and we'll see something change but with the Black Series line they they have made them all as if they were real world haven't they so even when you've had Clone Wars characters we've fortunately for for our wallets not had the situation where you get a cartoon version and then you get a what would it look like in real thing so so there is that at least there's that saving grace that uh, (laughs) we should just get one set of each Um, what occurred to me the other day was though how many different box art colours is there going to be now yes yeah absolutely yeah whoa so I'm looking at my shelf oh, now are there that many yeah. colours <laughs> I was going to say it's uh, yeah they're already doubled down on yellow because you've got that for Clone Wars and uh, Mandalorian different shades of yellow gold yeah. I guess but uh, yeah we haven't even got the, all the films done yet let alone all these spin-offs mm. yeah <sighs> I hope Hasbro take their time I know everyone's always clambering for their favourite figures, but I think if you're a completist, it's not like myself. <laughs> there comes a point where you have to say, I can't sustain this. <laughs> yeah. Is there any you've missed? I really, have you, you know, no, you still no, managed to get the full... I've still got the full gambit. Nice. You know, you know, actually, the only figure I haven't got is the... You, know, you always have a grey item, don't you? And it's the Chewbacca that was awarded to the Hasbro team which I shouldn't be able to get anyway. Um, I think it was like 500 of them made the prototype. But no, I have a full set of the entire Black Series range. Nice. Yep. (laughs) So Santa won't be bringing you any Black Series this Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) Or will he? We'll talk about that later, I think, yeah. So back to the Black Series and collecting, or it doesn't necessarily have to be Black Series, but obviously... We, we're coming up to Christmas, so uh, what has been your your favourite purchase of the year, Martin? Oh, me. Uh, uh. Purchase of the year. Well, I'd be lying if I didn't say, and it sounds like a shameless self-promotion thing, but I've had a lot of fun getting stuff for the Zuvium. Yes. Yeah. Which obviously was the, the, the plus side of 2020 for me. So, yeah, all Constable Zuvio stuff has uh, <laughs> been very much welcomed. Um, I've had a lot of a lot of fun out and there's there's a lot of stuff out there <laughs> yeah yeah both greg and i have obviously done tours albeit some months ago and mm. uh, i think hopefully over the uh, festive period i may uh, may get to find a spare hour or two and have another visit well i want to get you so you're both you both are overdue a visit as they say but i want to get yes. you carl with martha yes he's no exhibit in there thank you very much yes and obviously greg holly needs the experience absolutely yeah we'll get that lined up exactly yeah. but yeah there are more items in there than when you both saw it yes so for, for the people at home who may not have heard about the Zivian please give us a little uh, description about what it is and yeah so <laughs> I'm slightly obsessed with the good constable Zuvio uh, which started off as a bit of a joke and now become has become a genuine focus 
so I own a fair few of the figure, multiples of the figure, which I won't ruin the number, but you find out in the, the Zuvium. But also what I've got, which is actually really, was really nice, or is really nice, was uh, lots of artwork. And this all stemmed from my wife, Emma, saying, it's such a shame that you don't have the artwork out on display. To me saying, so you're really saying you want this artwork in the main house as sort of adjoining the front room? To which she said, well, no, I don't want to out that much. But it does feel wrong that you've kind of got it in a folder. So we came up with the idea that we got a room that, frankly, was, was going spare. And she basically said, why don't you put it up in there? So I did, and then kind of didn't stop. And then said, perhaps I should turn this into a museum. And so now, if you visit the Zuvium, you get a, I think it's about a 10 minute pre-show. Uh, where you get the history of Constable Zuvia explained by a Star Wars celebrity. And then when you take the tour proper, which you can do virtually at the moment, you get an audio tour of, around the Zuvium where all the items are. So you've got artwork, you've got the figures, you've got some stuff that perhaps you've not seen before regarding the figures, you've got some customs, you've got the Tops trading cards. Also, and Greg was uh, instrumental in this, we've got a nice little history of, from Jake Lunt Davis as to how Zuvio was designed and some of the little Easter eggs that are in his design. And I think since you guys do it, I also have a, I actually have a copy of something uh, kindly given to me from the Lucasfilm archives, which I have to whisper a bit, a copy of, which is a bit about Zuvio's design as well. Uh. So all in all, it's a it's a fun experience. It takes about half an hour. Um, like I say it's virtual at the moment. You can find it on the Facebook page is the main place to go and get your bookings. Uh, there's always a waiting list, which is always very encouraging. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah basically all things Constable Zuvio is the Zuvium thoroughly recommended as well cause you'll need another wing in the house for for it as it continues to grow and grow yeah yeah well there's a lot in the loft already <laughs> <laughs> for Christmas yes that was the question wasn't it what do I yeah. want for Christmas uh, what did I say I wanted for Christmas yeah. more Zuvios more Zuvios um, so I'm actually so this is going to sound non-Star wars but I'm actually getting a 3D printer for Christmas which oh, potentially oh. is cheaper than the Black Series collection. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be 3D printing your own Black Series. Might as well. Um, yeah. but Just no, think of all the Zuvio, Zuvio things you can print with that. This is sadly part of the uh, the thought process. <laughs> so so it's be able to print stands and things like that. So I'm going to have lots of fun with that. Because I do know one present I'm getting. Cause, so it is quite easy to get me stuff for Christmas because you get Star Wars stuff. And, and Emma... <laughs> has latched on that the sensible thing is when you do the pre-orders for the Black Series stuff, yeah. pretty much from mid-November when it starts arriving, it immediately gets shuffled off and wrapped up. So even oh. though I know what's coming, they kind of get dished out as the presents. But yesterday I went to all the cool stuff uh, to see Sir Lord Tree. Indeed. Indeed. And, and I was smitten by uh, a nice little item. I got a set of Darth Vader dominoes, Ooh. which is going into my Christmas stocking. <laughs> Very nice. Because I've never seen Star Wars dominoes before. Oh, I've never even know. <laughs> I think I have. So there you go. That's bizarrely on my Christmas list. Yeah. I hope Emma saw me liking them. <laughs> 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 and remember, folks, whilst in Fording Bridge, be sure to give our friend Dave Tree a visit at all the cool stuff. Yes. And... and visit the website and order your Black Series online. He's got a nice uh, little Hasbro selection on there now. Yes, he does all, he does uh, all the pre doesn't he? And he does mm -hmm. all the pre-orders now as well, as I think we've mentioned in previous shows. So along with the many UK retailers that get bombarded with orders every time a new wave's announced, which it does seem to have gone quiet. <laughs> I'm probably, <laughs> as, as we're recording this on Sunday evening, <laughs> we've got Mando Monday again tomorrow. There's probably going to be a whole heap more announced. But... <laughs> Martin groans with inevitability. He just jinxed Martin's bank bank, bank account. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I thought I was done. I, th I think we're done. I think we're done for Black Series this year. I think. I would have thought so. Yeah. There's been a lot this year. Yeah, yeah. Although, as I've pointed out in uh, several reviews of Mando episodes, and we said earlier, you know, you've got at least a couple of Mando era Boba Fetts that you could do. Dark Troopers surely got to be in the line somewhere yeah it's like i think if you look at the number of mando black series that have come out it's already kind of leading from the front i think we're at number nine but yeah. i think that's, that's the only thing i think could um could be announced is there's a gap between five and nine yeah so we might get a little flourish at the end and that that 
smells of um well no actually no that was was that the gideon and uh the ones that have already been announced isn't it i've got to think what numbers they are now oh gideon and uh yeah. um, gideon Quill. um Quill. and what was the other one Paul creed Paul creed yes oh uh Kreef. yeah so that's, that, yeah. Six, seven, eight. So yeah, that could fill it out. That's six, seven, eight. Yeah. So I think we could be done, but I'd be surprised if we don't get to see. And I can never get who's the Katie Sackett one. Oh, Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan. But again, they can bring her out as part of Clone Wars, can't they? And yeah, yeah, or Rebels, yeah. And you can do that anytime. Yeah, I think well, the Boba Fett, Boba Fett ones, they won't be in a rush. No. Although some, somebody said that they thought that the Shaw Trooper was going to get really released in the Mando line. I'm yeah, sure. I'd, I'd be disappointed, he says, looking at the Imperial Stormtrooper. I'd be disappointed if they start reissuing in the new box because that's what the archive's there for. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I can kind of give them. Yeah, if there's a minor difference, you can kind of. Okay, fair enough. You're giving us the Mandalorian version of that. Yeah. But I couldn't see any real difference in the stuff yesterday, well, last week, should I say? No. It, it looked like established characters, with the exception of the the drivers, obviously. Yeah. yeah Everything else looked the same. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean the the driver is really exactly that tank pilot, but yeah, different colour, sort of. But, silvery color. but that to me, you know, not not that I run these things, but that to me, I can. I can understand the justification of that being a Mandalorian release because it's in the Mandalorian. It's different. Yeah. The others bring them out as archive. Yeah, you still bring them out. Yeah, but, but they're archive collection, not yeah, they're not lines uh, or series or film mm. specific. Yeah, and it, it depends as well. I think how how far a particular line is due to go. So so far, I don't think we've had anything from New Hope in the new new style boxes. Nope. No, nope. nope. got nothing with New Hope. We've had we've had a few few Empire figures, which were broadly speaking the same figures that were released for the 40th anniversary. Well, not broadly, they were. It was Vader, yeah. Luke Skywalker in a snow speeder and the Hoth Rebel pilot. Yeah, mm. and then obviously and you've got the few from Jedi. A few from Jedi. Jedi was a good range because you got Akbar, Tebow, and then the three Endo hero uh, Endo Endor heroes of Leia, Luke, and Han. Yeah. So that was a nice new bunch, even though you could get um, all of them but Tebow and Akbar in that San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Mega thing. box. With Pat Blue in it, though, you see. So will Pat Blue come out as yeah. a Return of the Jedi? But yeah, I kind of hope so, because that's, that's, re- that's the only reason I wanted to buy that box, is just to get Pat Blue. On his speeder bike. My favourite Ewok. Yeah. <laughs> but they're light on. Um, so you've got, some, you've got two from Attack of the Clones at the moment, haven't you? Yeah, which are yeah. two clones. Jar Jar's coming out from the Phantom Menace, which I, I'm overjoyed that Jar Jar is figure number one. Yeah. I think that's that's great. Revenge of the Sith, don't think we've got anything from that yet. Nope. No. Haven't got anything for The Force Awakens yet in the new boxes. Haven't got anything from Rise of Skywalker other than Dark... Uh, Dark Rise Ray. Ray. Yeah, Dark Ray's out very soon. And God, what's the... Uh, <laughs> it's always getting late now, isn't it? That's um, Jedi. Last Jedi, haven't got any out for that yet, have we? No. So they've got plenty to be getting on with. Yeah, and all these new shows. So I can't see Boba Fett being rushed out. And put it as an exclusive, convention exclusive, and all of a sudden you've got a license to print money. Yeah. How about yourself, Greg? What's on your Christmas list? I guess the main Star Wars thing this year was the the Art of Mando book. Um, Yes. So uh, my mum had pre-ordered that for me for my Christmas and uh, got a message from Amazon to say it'll be delivered in January. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, I think that's the only that's the only thing I'm aware of. Everything else will be surprises. So, but again, that'll be January. So no, like what, worth like the wait those, though. The, be... the, those art of books. I know we we've, we've discussed them in the past. Really. Uh... Really, really good. Cool. What about yourself, Carl? Have you got anything Star Wars? That, here? That's on my uh, on, on the wish list. I'm trying to think if there's anything else Star Warsy. No, just hoping that uh, in the few days off I've got that we uh, we get some Brown Squadron action in. Yeah, we will. Yeah. So, with our B wings, with our new B wings. Yeah, we now have B wings, and should we so desire to flip to the dark side, we can also have Tie Defenders. Yep. I think I downloaded the update last night, night before, but I've not yet uh, had a chance to hop in a B wing and blow stuff up. <laughs> yeah, I'm look, looking forward to giving it a go. I've got uh, bought a new telly, oh. so uh, I'm looking forward to playing it on that big bad boy. 
<laughs> Satan times. So, with the uh, thoughts of what we're dreaming for for Christmas, feature two songs now from Ben and Hannah Randall and their Star Wars tribute album from a few years ago. We have I'm Dreaming of a New Death Star and Han, It's Cold Outside. I have made a career out of wearing a mask. I want you to save your life by wearing a mask and maybe save the lives of others by wearing a mask. I've got to save Lou. Conversation, I'm done. Just let me go out. I think you should hold out because it's cold outside. To borrow is lifelong. At so least long. I've got to say that I've tried. If you die and I've died. got to go now. Don't think you should go out because it's cold. Han, it's cold outside. That was I'm dreaming of a new Death Star and Han, it's cold outside by Ben and Hannah Randall. If you can download their album for free at uh, www.noisetrade.com forward slash Ben and Hannah Randall. Go check it out. Yeah, there's I think six or seven Star Wars themed Christmas songs. Uh, so perfect listening along with Desert Planet Discs, obviously, uh, whilst you're wrapping your presents or stuffing your turkey. So this is, we're almost at the end of a fantastic year, 2020. What a, what a oh, belter it's so been. So many things that we, we did. I'm, just, look, yeah. I'm just looking forward to having a couple of days in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> looking forward to 2021. What's everyone got in the lineup or hoping to, hoping to do or, you know, not a chance of having happen or what, what do you hope 2021 brings to us all? Mr. Keeler. Inoculations. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. is cl- top of my list, but assuming let, let's assume the world gets back to some normality, genuinely, and it sounds really twee, but genuinely meeting up with friends, going to conventions if they happen. In fact, they will happen. They might not be the big things that we had before, but if the world becomes safe again, 
then we can start meeting up with friends and reliving the good times in person even though i think some of some of the online stuff has brought people together in a different way yeah but yeah i just some form of normality would be fantastic if hopefully there'll be a rancho bash if i can get to that i'll be first in the list well no i won't be first in the list because i know the people who are there they're, they're even more diehard fans than myself but I'll, I'll do everything i can to get there and um seeing seeing ash they've still got their tour to finish I think we're all Indeed. booked in to when that happens. That that'll be a hell of a hell of a night. In March, I've also got to. I won that raffle to see them in Edinburgh at Sneaky Pete's, ah. and all, like a hundred capacity venue or something, one hundred fifty something like that. So that's going to be cool. Excellent. Is as the date being confirmed, or is it? No, I think it's it's is yet to be confirmed. That'd be amazing. Based on based on whenever things go back to normal. Yeah. But no, I, I think 2021 will be a weird year again because it'll be the year after the year before. When international travel opens up, that will be interesting to see what happens then. Yeah. But yeah, I just want to get out and see people now without yeah. the risk of killing myself or them. Absolutely. Which should be lovely. 2021 might be the year where we don't get pasta. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because we also have Brexit to look forward to. In the- oh, a lot of things we've kind of forgotten about because of we've had COVID <laughs> yeah. to look forward to uh, on our plates. Yeah, when you were talking but... about that international travel. <laughs> yeah, international travel. International travel without massive hurdles to get through. Do you uh, see how I got news for you on Friday? Nope. No. There's an amazing line in it from Romish Ranganathan. He says, yeah, this, that's it. We're talking, talking again about Brexit. He said, do you remember back in February when we all went... Oh God! I wish there was something else in the news other than Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't wish too hard. But yeah, so we, yeah, we got the fun of Brexit. <laughs> but yeah, we got lots to look forward to. Should we talk about something positive? <laughs> yeah, Mando oh. season three. <laughs> we'll have that, uh, season three of Mando. Hopefully, Obi Wan Kenobi will start filming. Yeah, there's another chance that. No, maybe not, because I think it's going to be filming elsewhere, but still a chance there, for guys, to maybe get a part as an extra in a Star Wars show. There's so many coming now. Hopefully, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> well, Kenobi's, Kenobi's filming in the UK, isn't it? I think it's going to film in the States, and or it's but, filming in Pinewood at the moment, yeah. Yeah, but of course, if we've missed the obvious place for uh, for us all to make the cameo, which is, of course, in the also announced in the Disney call, Rogue Squadron. <laughs> Oh, Brown Squadron clearly are going to Brown be in Brown Squadron clearly need to be uh, a part of that film. Right, let's start tweeting her now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're happy to be cannon fodder, just like in the game. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think our best, our best chance of getting in is not in an actual physical cameo, but I think we need to try and talk... Um, again, Carl, I really, I, Clang, another name drop, but Greg can do this one as well, and I think you as well, Carl. We need to start haranguing Mr. Collins... Yes. And when they're doing for voices of pilots <laughs> on the headset, we need to get Brown Squadron in there, but the words need to be things like, uh, what button does this? And <laughs> how, how do I ping? How do I ping? I, uh, I, 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 think what, <laughs> I think what we need to do, we need to do a Brown Squadron sizzle reel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'll record some in-game footage and yep. the, uh, the pilot dialogue <laughs> yeah <laughs> you go there you go this is this is our sizzle reel for why we think we should be in uh, rogue squadron <laughs> come on thrust master give it some push push yeah. it in <laughs> push it in thrust master i tell you i don't uh, you you must never regret getting the thrust master that's another thing i'm looking forward to in 2021 when we all meet up then you can have a go on the thrust master <laughs> and wow you're going to be impressed I think um, Holly Fry on Twitter the other day was saying that she was playing the uh, Oculus Batu thing do you, do you guys know Holly? I, I know the name, I've never met yeah. her Holly Fry does Full of Sith with uh, Brian Young and she was saying she was playing the Bat- she, she loves Galaxy's Edge right? so she was playing the Batu Oculus game and she was recounting the amount of times that she actually fell over during the VR because she was sort of putting her arms on bars and things like that and leaning on them <laughs> and they weren't there <laughs> so one of my proudest tweets was uh, I, I, I sent her which you guys have seen the picture of me with the VR kit and the Thrustmaster in me in my office chair and <laughs> how it's a really unattractive picture of me looking very geeky 
And I said, don't feel bad. This is how I look every Sunday night, having the time of my life. To which she brilliantly tweeted back, I think it was. She said, you may look like that on the outside, but on the inside, you look like this. And it was that gif of Poe going, woohoo! But yes, that's exactly right. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. All looking like Red 5 crashing into the... uh... (laughs) <laughs> the force the force fields on top of Scarif. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah, lobby date should we, should we start talking to Mr. Collins to see if there's any way we can get the dialogue in? I think yeah. so. What, I th- button, I think that... what button is it for missiles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll be there in a minute. I've just been killed again. Yeah. Which one should we go for, guys? C or D? C or D. C or D. C or D. <laughs> what, 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 what do you mean the, the ships aren't labelled with big letters in the real Star Wars <laughs> universe? Oh, looks like we're going to have to fly back again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the immortal, I've just died, followed by one of us going, yeah, I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza guy. Pizza guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's such a game. Yes. How about yourself, Greg? 2021. As Martin mentioned, the Ash gigs, hopefully, if gigs get back to normal. Looking forward to getting back to some conventions, hopefully, again as well. Uh, yeah, a bit, a bit more normality would be nice. And as Martin said, catching up with everybody and getting to see people face to face and getting a hug, oh, a high oh. five, maybe playing some shows. Oh, Yes. Yes, play, play some shows, and maybe even releasing the next Darth Elvis album. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, there's lot, lots to look forward to, I think, in 2021. 2020, we've made it what we can with uh, being locked down, stuck inside a lot of the time, working from home and not seeing many people face-to-face, but the, the Zoom chats and the recording of the podcast like this, and uh, yeah, it's been good to... Um, seeing people still even in the virtual environment uh, but no 2021 is going to be good i'm saying it now just promise me that we will still do the investors calls together i think yeah. that's, <laughs> a, that's a must now i think nah, I, and a holiday special and a holiday yeah special. i think there's loads to look forward to you know going to events and stuff like that but i do think the the one thing that people generally will carry on with more um i know i for one really grateful that you know, it's sort of fast forwarded all this technology and people are doing these Zoom meetings, you know, because people have chat threads on Facebook and things like that. But, you know, sometimes just sort of sitting around and we all live in different parts of the UK and just to be able to have chats with, you know, friends that you, because of distance and things like that, you can't see them as regularly as perhaps you'd like. Then these sort of things on technology, Zoom chats and all that, I think that's the one thing that I hope does continue not as a replacement for live events but just as a supplement yeah. so yeah definitely uh, so, something nice to take out of an otherwise fairly strange year probably fair to say if it hadn't been for Covid there would be no Darth Elvis in France nope. we wouldn't have got that little project started so you know that Covid to thank for that I guess so it's it's the there gift that keeps on giving. The gift that keeps <laughs> on giving. But yeah, it has made yeah. us look at things differently. Yeah, absolutely. And like I say, I think there's it's proven there's no excuse for us not to all keep in contact now because it just all shows, and I think we all kind of knew it, didn't we? But it, it, it's an effort, isn't it, to keep all the plates spinning of staying in contact with everyone and giving meaningful time rather than lip service. Whereas the lockdowns, you know, the COVID's not a great thing, but the lockdowns has certainly moved to a place where you realise it's easier than you think. Yeah. Yeah. But I still look forward to uh, actually meeting up in person. And getting drunk in Vegas and missing Calvin Harder's concert. Well, these these are things we've got to do. Yeah. Yeah. These are things we've got to do. And, and actually, so one thing in 2021 I am doing, it has provoked... It's going to see Calvin Harris. And... <laughs> it's going to see Calvin Harris. We'll, see, we, well, I don't know, Greg. If we actually do eventually see Calvin Harris, I'm not sure. I think it'll be a disappointment now, won't it? I think so, Yeah. <laughs> It won't have the same uh, same history and stories behind it. But, but I know that Jed and myself and some others have spent some time talking about should we do something else? Yes, you should. <laughs> As we always said, though, if we do do something else, we, we don't want it to just be 
doing that again. As amazing it was, we just don't want to sully the memory. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, I must stress, it was only amazing because of the thousand people that turned up. All we did was make sure there was somewhere for them to go. So what we don't want to do is do something like that again and it not be as good. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Jed's a busy man, but he certainly wants to do things. So, yeah, hopefully in 2021, we'll start turning some thoughts into an actual plan. Oh, watch this space, people. Watch this space. Yeah. <laughs> it is as reliable as all the rumors you read about everything in Star Wars on the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we certainly so, want to do something at some point. We know that. But it's got to be the right thing. Yay. Yay. Look forward to it. Yeah. So that about brings us to the end of this festive special. Just remains to say a massive thank you to Martin Keeler, president mm. of the Suvium. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank Otherwise you. known as the Thrustmaster. Yeah, that's right. yeah. The Thrustmaster. Uh, thank you very much for having me on, and I do apologise to everyone who really has no idea who I am. And <laughs> hopefully you have picked up that I really am nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Be somebody to us. To us. Yes. But I look forward to coming back next Christmas. Yeah. I'll book place now. Yeah, we'll get on to your agent. <laughs> Go through Jed. <laughs> so, thank you to Martin. Thank you to Greg. Thank you to you for listening. And on behalf of all of us at Desert Planet Discs and Panther Tracks, have a very Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, folks. Hard day. Hard day. Thanks for listening to Desert Planet Discs. If you want to stay part of the action and up to date on all the latest Star Wars news, check out the Fanta Tracks app via the App Store on your mobile device. You can contact us via email at radio at fantatracks.com. Comment, like, and share on any of our social media feeds at Fanta Tracks, and be sure to subscribe, leave a review, preferably a five star one, on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcatcher or smart speaker of choice. Don't forget to head to fantatracks.com forward slash radio, home of Fantatracks Radio, 
and follow us on our social media feeds at Panther Tracks and bookmark panthertracks.com for all the latest in Star Wars news. Christmas 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Ever cheap, but always cheesy. Coming up next on Fantha Tracks Radio, it's Making Tracks. <laughs> 